boxing it makes you strong and hard and defending women and defending women and you can feel yourself that when you're playing in the ground that you are different. This competition means international exposure. They can see champions in action, they can play with them and this is really really important for us. Hello and welcome to Qatar 365. I'm Laila Humaira and on this episode, we explore how sport is a major pillar in Qatar's National Vision 2030. From encouraging an active lifestyle to shaping future Olympians, we'll look at how the country is fueling the competitive spirit in locals and residents alike. And what better way to do that than a whole day dedicated to sports? Adol Halim to collab around all the festivities. Sit down. Yep. Come to the mount. Good. Huh? Saif Al Mohanadi is learning how to stay safe through jujitsu. The 14-year-old likes the fact that size doesn't matter when it comes to self-defense. It doesn't mean that someone is bigger than you, or larger than you, or heavier than you. He's gonna win, like when you fight or something. Like my coach. I tried on him, uh, he's a lot bigger, he's, he got muscles, he got everything. He's a lot bigger and uh, I can still like, you know, sometimes win because it's all about technique. Saif is one of 10,000 attendees participating in national sport day events organized by Qatar Foundation. The country really has set a vision and a priority around sports. I think we've always seen that um, from hosting major sporting events, but also by creating a special national day just for sports. That's not something you really see in any other parts of the world. So it's quite clear that leadership of this country and the sort of vision of this country is really focused on sports. And that has threaded through from grassroots to elite. Speaking of elite, Olympian Ibtihaj Mohammed and tennis player Anz Jabour were invited to inspire by showing sports can be a safe space for all. What we've found is that role models are crucial and representation is crucial. So what we've tried to do is engage amazing ambassadors from all over the world, but also here within Qatar to really play that role um, and show that no matter who you are, you can participate in sport and be physically active. Another thing that we're trying to do with our ambassadors is really create role models for our Women's Sports Academy, which we're developing over the next few years, which is really to identify young girls in particular who have high potential in various sports. So Ibtihaj Mohammed and Anz Jabour, amazing women like that, are really playing a crucial role in developing that program with us and playing that role model component that we talked about. Here in Education City, Qatar Foundation has planned a full day of activities for the entire family, including several ability-friendly programs. Also this year, there's a special focus on sports activities for women and girls exploring the different ways of having a healthy lifestyle. Lean Khatib Abdullah plays football at school but wanted to try her hand at archery. National Sport Day means a lot to the 11-year-old. It makes me feel proud of myself because when I was young I used to only want to be a ballerina but when I, when I grow it's more, I'm more looking forward to sports. Across the city, Expo 2023 Doha hosted its first National Sports Day with more than 230 activations sprawled across more than 7 million square meters at Albida Park. The Sports Day is above just being active. It's uh, to send a message to the whole society, to the community, uh, to engage uh, with all of the, uh, let's say the families, the governmental entities will come together to celebrate a well-known uh, celebration, which is the Sport Day. For Mujahid Mohammed, who's played high-level football, just getting families together to enjoy a day in the park is the most important part of the day. That's a part of sport, as we say. The sports usually uh, play as a major role in different aspects to bring people together. If there's one sure way to burn off some steam and sweat it out, it's boxing. The combat sport first debuted at the Olympics in 1904, but the women's category was only added in 2012. Since then, it's been the pursuit of one woman to fly the flag for Qatar on the world's most prestigious boxing ring. I got gloved up here at ORX Boxing with Afaf al Qurani, the first female boxer in the Qatari national team, to understand how the sport has grown in the region in popularity and diversity.
Afaf, thank you so much for being with us today. Firstly, can you tell us, how did you first get into boxing? And when I was so young, I was very naughty girl. I was so hyper and we used to watch a lot of wrestling in the TV. So it was, that's the, one of the reasons make me love boxing. And I used to obsess on Muhammad Ali Klai and Prince Nassim. It was the, they were uh, my idols. And let's talk about your career as a boxer here in Qatar. There were challenges initially when you wanted to be a boxer in the national team. How did you overcome those challenges? And the first time, there wasn't accepting a federation, a woman playing in boxing. There wasn't accepting any kind of lady playing martial arts or boxing. So I just make a presenting for them. I do workshops in the school. I do workshops in the government school to educate the ladies. Finally, after two years, they accept to give us a permission to play. So that's the reason it's making me the Qatar, Qatar Federation they give me a chance. It was a good chance for me to open for me the door for the new generation to be in the boxing. And today you're not only a coach, but you have your own boxing academy. How has that been like for you? First time when we start in our academy in Oman, in Muscat, it was a little bit difficult for me. It was the mental. It wasn't the physically. Physically, it's very easy. But the hard thing, it was the mental, how to change them, how to give them a new muscles memory to show them this the boxing, it makes you strong and hard. So that was the hard thing to, to send to my students before the physically, mentally, how to be independent and strong mind before muscles. And finally, how would you like to see boxing grow further in Qatar? In 2030, there will be Asian game here. So this is the first time uh, Qatar playing for national team for ladies in boxing. And I reached my target. That was my target. I'm the first lady knock the door to tell them open for the lady and I get my dream. And I hope my students in the future, they will be also including to play in boxing. There's just a little over a hundred days left until the start of the biggest international sporting event of the year, the Paris Olympic Games. As Team Qatar prepares to go for glory, we zoom in on one Olympic sport that's growing in popularity here, getting kids as young as eight to be on guard and quick on their feet. Meet Yannick Borel. The French fencer is an Olympic gold medalist three-time Olympian and four-time European champion. That makes him one of the most decorated fencers here at the Fencing Grand Prix Qatar. But even for an Olympic champion, fencing is a tricky sport to master. Fencing is a complicated sport. Uh, it's like chess with, uh, with, with a weapon. So uh, you have to be really smart, you have to be physical, tactical and technical. So um, you have to be complete. When you find that uh, really early, it's good for you. But sometimes you need time. And with time comes experience. That's what Qatar is trying to build for its young fencers, some of whom are competing on the global stage for the first time. This competition needs international exposure. They are, of course, not competitive yet, but they, they can get a benefit. They can see champions in action, they can play with them, and this is really, really important for us. Competitions like the Grand Prix Qatar give athletes a chance to put their skills to the test, see how far they can stay calm under pressure, and experience the joy or heartbreak of winning and losing. It's also one of the last major tournaments in the fencing world before all the focus turns to the Olympics. It promises to be a special Summer Games for Yannick, who hopes to be crowned champion once again, this time on home soil in Paris. My goal is not to qualify. My goal is to be Olympic medalist or gold Olympic medalist. That's my mindset. It's the mentality Clément Sports also wants to build in its fences. Christophe Clément set up his academy 10 years ago in the hopes of creating a diverse fencing community. Other than improving their fencing skills, Maitre Clément, as his students call him, also hopes he can build good characters and sportsmanship in them. We want to make them be a good person. And the sport and the high elite sport is something coming on the top. It's not for everybody, but at least we want that the people they wish to do that, then we, we give them the opportunity to do so. Parents send their children, some as young as eight, to start learning to be agile in movement and mind. 
Others are even representing their countries on the international stage. My name is Sasha. I'm from Lebanon. Uh, I've been playing fencing for about seven years now. I entered the Lebanese national team last summer. Within the pool of fencers at Clermont Sports, Meta Clement has built a system to ensure that his students get to practice dueling with people from all nationalities, levels and backgrounds. From the 13 years old, we regroup everybody from the three centres and we have four different uh, kind of competition format that we train them like that. It's working very well. That's why everybody is going through two trainings per week. One training is more dedicated for the technique and the Saturday is dedicated for the competition minds, learning how to perform, how to win, uh, imposing the, 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 the system. All the groundwork at the Qatar Fencing Federation and the academies is set to culminate at the 2030 Asian Games. And as someone who knows exactly what it's like to win at the Olympics, Yannick has a few words of wisdom. Don't believe in chance, in luck. Believe in work, hard work, consistency, and believe in yourself. It's, it's really important. It's clear that for Qatar, all roads lead to the Paris Olympics for now. But beyond that, the country is also heavily investing in sporting stars of the future. We hope you've enjoyed this episode, but that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtags. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Qatar 365.